Come and listen to the story about a man named... Drysdale. Surprise, Melbourne. Well, for heaven's sakes, it certainly is. Why didn't you let me know you were coming to town? Oh, we didn't let anybody know. We're here under a cloak of absolute secrecy. Oh, well, excuse me, I'll get uh, back to you. Just a moment, Miss Hathaway. We need your pledge of silence. My goodness. What is it, John? Your oil company mixed up in some big defense project? A new secret rocket fuel, is that it? Of course, and you don't want foreign agents to know you're in town. It's even more important than that. We don't want the Clampets to know we're in town. The Clampets? Well, they're really wonderful people, but I'm afraid that hillbilly hospitality is a bit overpowering for a city girl. Oh, that's right. They met you at the plane after your wedding. Yes, that ride from the airport was an experience that Edith still hasn't gotten over. Right through the middle of Beverly Hills on their honeymoon express. <laughs> I've been so embarrassed in my life. Oh, hang on, dear. We'll be at the hotel soon. Uh, Jethro, uh, that's the hotel just up the street there. Uh, but don't stop in front. There's a basement garage. Just, just make a turn at that, at that alley there. Oh, you're coming home with us first. We got a surprise for you. Another one? I mean, you've done too much already. Yes, this, this ride from the airport is something we'll never forget. Jack, that ain't nothing compared to what's waiting for you at home. Oh, here, here's the alley, Jethro. Just make a... Uh, uh... What was the surprise they had for you? I'll answer that. The Clampets had put up their little cabin out by the pool to keep Granny happy. And we made the mistake of admiring it. You mean... Yep. Oh, no, not for your honeymoon. That was the surprise. Surprise! 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 Surprise, all right? Just look at their faces. <laughs> well, anyway, now you understand our cloak and dagger approach. The Clampets, bless their well meaning hearts, must not find out that we're in town. Our lips are sealed. Right, Miss Hathaway? Chief, the presence of Mr. and Mrs. Brewster in our city shall henceforth be considered classified information and shall not be revealed to any unauthorized person or persons under any circumstances whatsoever. Why don't you practice saying yes? <laughs> well, now that that's out of the way, we come to the point of our visit. Edith and I are going to settle down out here. Really? Wonderful. John's company is opening a West Coast office. And I promised Edith she can build a dream house. Oh. I spent my whole life in New York apartments, and this is really going to be a thrill. We've already found our lot, and we'd like your bank to handle the escrow. My pleasure. We're going to be here a week. Now, do you think we can keep it a secret from the Clampets? Of course, right? On my honor, I do hereby pledge... Just say yes. <laughs> As we're leaving, we'll telephone the Clampets from the airport and tell them hello and goodbye. You know, dear, it might be safer if we just fly over their house and drop a note, huh? <laughs> What are you aiming to tell Mr. Drysdale, Jed? Well, I'm just going to tell him the truth, that we're fixing to move back home, leastways for a spell. Well, don't you let him talk you out of it. He's going to yowl like a scalded cat. <laughs> oh, I think he'll take it all right. He knows you've had a hankering for a long time now. It ain't just me, Jed. Everybody wants to go back home. 
Ain't that right, everybody? I don't. <laughs> Speak when you're spoke to. <laughs> Shush up and drive, boy. Well, Granny said everybody. You ain't everybody. I'm somebody. <laughs> that ain't everybody. Well, the three of you ain't everybody neither. It takes four to be everybody. <laughs> Shush up and drive, boy. You can make sure we'll be glad to get back home. See, Jed? Everybody wants to go. That ain't everybody. <laughs> One, two, three, four, everybody. Gee whiz, Granny. Just hush up and drive more. Can we come in? Well, of course. My goodness, this is our day for surprise visits. <laughs> come in, come in. Sit down. Well, see you later. Duty calls. <laughs> Would you like some coffee? Oh, no, thanks. Uh, you're busy. Uh, we'll just get right to why we's here. You see, uh, Granny's been kind of restless. Everybody has. Oh, of course, and I understand. <laughs> You've been here a long time, no change of scenery. I suggest taking a little trip. Well, that's exactly what we had in mind. Good. <laughs> Southern California has everything to offer. Mountains, beaches, desert. We's going back home. Fine. Now, I'll drop by this evening with some maps and folders, and we'll plan a little... <laughs> you do mean this home? <laughs> you mean the home where we come from? Today. <laughs> Not three years ago. Home to the hills. Beverly Hills. <laughs> Not those other hills. <laughs> those other hills, Mr. Drysdale. You can send Jez $50 million to Luke Short in Sibley. Luke's got a safe in his general store. <laughs> Come on, Jim. No, no, you can't go. I won't let you go. What did you say? <laughs> Mr. Drysdale, we got a lot to do, and it's a long drive back to our cabin. And I can't wait to get there. But you've got a cabin here, the one you put up beside the pool, remember? It ain't quite the same. Now, stand aside. <laughs> what will I tell the Brewsters? <laughs> You mean them honeymooners? Yes, they're back in town. <laughs> Granny, you remember that pretty little city woman that fell in love with the cabin? Oh, yes. And they still talk about that wedding night. Is that a fact? You know, Jed, I never did get to learn that poor city woman about how to make lye soap or sling chitlins or, or butcher hog. <laughs> Here is your chance. You gonna be here for a spell? For a whole week. Well, doggy. It would be kind of a shame to leave just now, wouldn't it? I reckon the Brewsters would look on it as downright unfriendly. <laughs> Let's go home and commence making the cabin ready for them. Oh, I'll never forget this. Neither will the Brewsters. <laughs> Are you fetch them to our place? I'll get them there somehow. <laughs> Sometime this afternoon. We'll be ready for them. See you later. Bye. What a terrible thing to do to the roosters. <laughs> Ned, on that Brewster escrow, knock 5% off our regular fee. <laughs> I feel better. <laughs> so fond of pigs and chickens. Charmin, she calls him. Funny how life has come full circle. As Mr. Brewster had made us rich by buying our oil. Now, at last, we got a chance to do something nice for him. I sure would like to be there when Mr. Drysdale tells him the good news. Oh, I understand you've been trying to find me, Melvin. Yeah, sit down, John. Edith and I were just overlooking at the lot. I've never seen a woman so happy and excited. All she can think about is that dream house. Glad I was able to save it for you, John. Right. <laughs> what do you mean? Clampet oil is very important to your company, wouldn't you say? Well, it certainly is. It's the richest field we've got, our major source of income. Without it, there'd be no West Coast office, no dream house, right? Right. Johnny. You came that close to losing it. Losing the clamp oil? Now, relax, relax. I was here to throw myself into the breach. <laughs> what happened? 
The Clampets came by to tell me they were moving back to their home in the hills. Yes? In a flash, I saw the danger you were in. One look at those wells, one sniff of that oil, one thump of those drills, and Jed Clampett would have said, out, throw everything out, close it down. <laughs> if you think so, the, the wells are quite a distance from the cabin. Johnny, I know these people. I know how they think. I know what makes them tick. Well, what did you do? Like I said, I know them. And one thing they respect is courage. <laughs> so I planted myself in front of the door like this, and I said, no, no. You can't go. I won't let you go. <laughs> oh, that did take courage. Well, you, you might have jeopardized your own relationship with me. Well, all I could think of at that moment was you and your bride and saving her dream house. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know what to say, Melbourne. It's, really, I, I'm just overwhelmed. Ah, forget it. <laughs> no, that's something I'll never do. Uh, Edith's waiting for me down in the car. I've got to tell her about this. Oh, John, there's something else you've got to tell her. <laughs> oh, what's that? <clears throat> Sit down. <laughs> what is it, Melbourne? What is it, John? <laughs> well, darling, it seems that in the excitement of the moment, he let it slip out that we're in town. Is that what you've been so nervous about telling me? <sighs> yes. Oh, my goodness, there are worse things than that. Well, I'm coming to them. Uh, Edith, that, that dream house we're going to build, I, I'd say it's worth a little sacrifice, a little temporary discomfort, wouldn't you? John, isn't this the street that goes up to the Clampets? <laughs> you didn't answer my question, dear. Oh, you didn't answer mine. Are we headed for the Clampets? Edith, no matter what happens today, just keep saying to yourself, my dream house, my dream house. It'll take you through whatever lies ahead. What does lie ahead? Well... Uh... Never mind. I see it. It's the Clampet driveway. Well, start saying it, dear. My dream house. My dream house. John, please don't turn in. Say it, darling. Say those three magic words. You turned in. My dream house. Did you hear that, Jed? My dream house. Sure grabs at your heart, don't it? <laughs> Here's a holding chicken for you, Miss Brewster. Oh, here. Let me hold it, dear. Well, so I'm here, Miss Brewster. You can have the pig. <laughs> My dream house. My dream house. Our doggy, she is fond of pig. Took it right inside with her. She seems partial to chickens. Did you see that? Mrs. Brewster's so happy she went to crying. Well, she's about to cut loose herself. Well, doggone it. The way she keeps calling that little cabin her dream house. It had set a mule to ballin'. Come on, Jeff. Want me to fetch a cow for Miss Brewster to milk? Not yet, boy. We're gonna let her do her learning on Ellie's goat. Uh, get the feel of it, so to speak. <laughs> what about her soap making lesson, Granny? Sh should I start a fire under the kettle? No. Just let's leave them two lovebirds alone in their dream house for a spell. After all, it's like a second honeymoon for them. Yeah, I'm glad Mr. Drysdale told us he was in town. Please unbolt the door, honey. Let's sit down and talk this over. Edith! Look, honey, I was trapped. I, I had to agree to this to save the Clampett oil field. Uh, to save your dream house. Don't you see, sweetheart? I did it for you. I, I love you. I... Look, honey, we can face anything as long as we're together. John, I'm sorry I've been such a child. It's all right, Chris. I feel better now that I've had a good cry. Well, of course you do. And you're absolutely right. We can face anything as long as we're together. Ah, that's my wonderful girl. And someday we'll, we'll look on this as a lark. We'll look back on it and we'll have a good laugh. When we're in that beautiful dream house, then. Huh? Oh, yes. Come in. Hello, honeymooners. How are you, Granny? How's everything? Oh, just wonderful, Granny. Fine. I got a dandy shoe prize for you. Young'uns, 
Fun dear, a kind of a lark, huh? <laughs> Don't worry about your clothes, honey. I'm bringing you a house dress. <laughs> <laughs> Poor little thing. She just can't take too much happiness, can she? <laughs> I milked that miserable goat. Oh, Edith, my wonderful... Oh. You, you did, didn't you? <laughs> Cheer up, dear. The, the worst is over. Oh, no, it isn't. You know what my next lesson is? What? How to make lye soap with hog renderings and possum fat. <laughs> and then I'm going to learn how to hand sling chitlins and stir up zargum. <laughs> well, doggies. <laughs> I, I, was, I was just kidding, dear. Well, I'm not done. I'm sorry, but I cannot take this kind of life. Especially when I know that a hundred feet away in that beautiful mansion, there are a dozen palatial bedroom suites with luxurious baths and dressing rooms. Darling, you've just given me a great idea. We'll be out of here and into one of those suites in a matter of minutes. How will you do it? Well, it's very simple. I'll, I'll just tell Granny that you're dying for a nice hot bath. Obviously, there are no bathing facilities here, so... Oh. And once we're inside that mansion, we'll never leave. Oh, John, you're wonderful. Yes. Oh, I can feel that hot tub already. Ah, you're turning a nice rosy color, Edith. I doubt it. This water's pretty hot. Oh, it ain't the water. It's my life so. <laughs> Want to wash your face? No, I, I don't know if I should. John has always admired soft, delicate skin. Then this is what you want. This would tender up a gator's hide. I think I've had enough. Want me to go over your back with the brush again? <laughs> no, please. I'd like to get out now. Well, just a minute. Ellie, fetch in the wrench water. Best to rinse off with rainwater. Cuts the soap. Otherwise, your skin is liable to soften right down to the quake. <laughs> you want me to do the pouring, Granny? Yeah, Ellie, you have a little height on me. <laughs> Here you are, honey. Stand up. All right, Ellie, let her have the rainwater. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you ever seen hot rain? <laughs> I, uh, I wonder if I should check on Edith. Well, not till Granny gives a signal. She don't allow men folk within shotgun range at bath time. <laughs> Chances are, Granny's letting her soak a bit. You see, this time of the year, she puts a little extra possum fat and coal oil in her soap. <laughs> possum fat and coal oil? Yeah, it leaves what they call a uh, lingering fragrance on the skin. <laughs> and it keeps the bugs away from one Saturday to the next. <laughs> There's the all-clear signal. You can go back to the cabin now. You're going to find a waiting was worth it. That's about it. Excuse me. Well, Jethro, let's keep the happiness coming. Now that Mrs. Brewster's learned how to milk, we're going to fetch her a nice fat cow. You don't have to come along, Uncle Jet. I can have the cow on the truck by myself. Well, I reckon you can at that. Handler General, here's $10. Yes, sir. I'll bring back the change. <laughs> James? Uh, Mr. Clampett, are the Brewsters still in the cabin? Yep, I'm happy as a pair of squirrels in a nut tree. <laughs> no, Mr. Clampett. No? No. 
You see, the Brewsters have bought a vacant lot here in Beverly Hills, and that's where Mrs. Brewster wants to put up her dream house. What the dickens you say? That's the simple truth. And all this time, we had them stuck way out in the back here. Yes. Well, uh, where is this lot of theirs? Let me drive you over and show it to you. Fine and dandy. Morning, Miss Hathaway. Good morning, Chief. You know, I could hardly sleep last night for worrying about the Brewsters. They're waiting for you in your office. Oh. <laughs> Chief, wait. <laughs> Everything's all right. It is? Yes, they moved into their hotel last evening. Oh, well. Melbourne, I thought I heard your voice. Yeah. Edith and I are going to pick up our architect and drive by the lot. I thought you might like to come along. You too, Miss Hathaway. Thank you, but I've seen the lot. It's just lovely. I'll be back in about an hour. Well, John, Edith, how do you like the way I got you back into your hotel room so quickly? It was magic, Melbourne. Pure magic. You just took a little intelligent thinking. <laughs> Getting close, Mr. McKeegan. You certainly are fortunate to find a vacant lot on this street. They paid enough for it. By the way, John, did anyone mention a 5% discount on your escrow fee? No. Good. Forget it. <laughs> Here it is, coming up on your right. Carrie Grant is one of our neighbors. Uh, he just so thrilled, she doesn't know what to... What? Oh, John! <laughs> She's ready now. <laughs> so, Miss Brewster's going to balling again. I would doubt about it. That woman just can't take too much happiness. <laughs> This has been a Filmways presentation. Viacom. Come and listen to the story about a man named... Drysdale. Surprise, Melbourne. Well, for heaven's sakes, it certainly is. Why didn't you let me know you were coming to town? Oh, we didn't let anybody know. We're here under a cloak of absolute secrecy. Oh, well, excuse me, I'll get that, back to Just me. a moment, Miss Hathaway. We need your pledge of silence. My goodness. What is it, John? Your oil company mixed up in some big defense project? A new secret rocket fuel, is that it? Of course, and you don't want foreign agents to know you're in town. It's even more important than that. We don't want the Clampets to know we're in town. <laughs> Clampets? Well, they're really wonderful people, but I'm afraid that hillbilly hospitality is a bit overpowering for a city girl. Oh, that's right. They met you at the plane after your wedding. Yes, that ride from the airport was an experience that Edith still hasn't gotten over. Right through the middle of Beverly Hills on their honeymoon express. <laughs> Oh, 
never been so embarrassed in my life. Well, hang on, dear. We'll be at the hotel soon. Uh, Jethro, uh, that's the hotel just up the street there. Uh, but don't stop in front. There's a basement garage. Just, just make a turn at that, at that alley there. Oh, you're coming home with us first. We got a surprise for you. Another one? I mean, you've done too much already. Yes, this, this ride from the airport is something we'll never forget. Jack, that ain't nothing compared to what's waiting for you at home. Oh, here, here's the alley, Jethro. Just make a... Uh, uh... What was the surprise they had for you? I'll answer that. The Clampets had put up their little cabin out by the pool to keep Granny happy. And we made the mistake of admiring it. You mean... Yep. Oh, no, not for your honeymoon. That was the surprise. Surprise! 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 They're surprised, all right? Just look at their faces. <laughs> well, anyway, now you understand our cloak and dagger approach. The Clampets, bless their well-meaning hearts, must not find out that we're in town. Our lips are sealed. Right, Miss Hathaway? Chief, the presence of Mr. and Mrs. Brewster in our city shall henceforth be considered classified information and shall not be revealed to any unauthorized person or persons under any circumstances whatsoever. Why don't you practice saying yes? <laughs> well, now that that's out of the way, we come to the point of our visit. Edith and I are going to settle down out here. Really? Wonderful. John's company is opening a West Coast office. And I promised Edith she can build a dream house. Oh. I spent my whole life in New York apartments, and this is really going to be a thrill. We've already found our lot, and we'd like your bank to handle the escrow. My pleasure. We're going to be here a week now. Do you think we can keep it a secret from the Clampets? Of course, right? On my honor, I do hereby pledge... Just say yes. <laughs> As we're leaving, we'll telephone the Clampets from the airport and tell them hello and goodbye. You know, dear, it might be safer if we just fly over their house and drop a note, huh? <laughs> What are you aiming to tell Mr. Drysdale, Jed? Well, I'm just going to tell him the truth, that we're fixing to move back home, leastways for a spell. Well, don't you let him talk you out of it. He's going to yowl like a scalded cat. <laughs> oh, I think he'll take it all right. He knows you've had a hankering for a long time now. It ain't just me, Jed. Everybody wants to go back home. Ain't that right, everybody? I don't. <laughs> Speak when you're spoke to. Just hush up and drive, boy. Well, Granny said everybody. You ain't everybody. I'm somebody. That ain't everybody. Well, the three of you ain't everybody neither. It takes four to be everybody. Just hush up and drive, boy. Duke and Lee sure will be glad to get back home. See, Jed? Everybody wants to go. That ain't everybody. <laughs> One, two, three, four, everybody. Gee whiz, Granny. Just hush up and drive more. Can we come in? Well, of course. Oh, my goodness, this is our day for surprise visits. <laughs> come in, come in. Sit down. Well, see you later. Duty calls. <laughs> Would you like some coffee? Oh, no, thanks. Uh, you're busy. Uh, we'll just get right to why we's here. You see, uh, Granny has been kind of restless. Everybody has. Oh, of course, and I understand. <laughs> You've been here a long time, no change of scenery. I suggest taking a little trip. That's exactly what we had in mind. Good. <laughs> Southern California has everything to offer. Mountains, beaches, desert. We's going back home. Fine. Now, I'll drop by this evening with some maps and folders, and we'll plan a little... You do mean this home? You mean the home where we come from? Today. Not three years ago. Home to the hills. Beverly Hills. Not those other hills. Those other hills, Mr. Drysdale. You can send Jez 